Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing good. Today in this video, we'll discuss on the creation of a background job for MRP. So let's get started. So before we log into SAP and start the creation of the background job, let's have a look at the prerequisites that are needed to set up the background job for MRP. So let's start with the first step. So the first step is basically to create the variance for MRP in the transaction MDBT. And the second step is to create the scope of planning in the transaction uh, OM0E. And then we are going to create the background job in the transaction SM36. And then to check the status of the background job, we, we use the transaction SM37. So in the first step of creating the variance for MRP, we have to uh, define the plan, uh, the planning parameters that are needed for the MRP background job to execute in that particular plant. So here uh, in the MDBT, we are going to define uh, the creation indicators of the purchase requisitions and also the scope of planning. So those parameters we will discuss when we log into SAP in more uh, detail. So once the variants are created in, MR, uh, in MDBT for the MRP background job, we then need to create a scope of planning. So this is basically needed only if you want to create uh, the similar parameters of the MRP uh, in for multiple plants. So let's say you have uh, three uh, or four plants, right, uh, for which the planning parameters will be unique. And you would like to uh, create a single scope of planning and add those four plans into the scope of planning and then assign the scope of planning into the variant for the MRP. So this step is only an optional and is only needed if you are going to configure multiple plans in a single scope of planning. If not, it, I mean, if you are only creating it for one plant, so then we can directly uh, create the uh, variant in MDBT and then jump on to the third step of creating the background job. So in SM36, we will basically create the background job and assign the variant that we created here in the first step. And then we are going to schedule the background job based on the frequency needed for that particular plant. <clears throat> so once the background job has been created in SM36 and then we uh, do the scheduling and release the job, the status of the background job can be uh, evaluated or checked in the transaction SM37. So let's log into SAP and take a look on this process. Uh, let me log into the first step, which is to create uh, the MRP variant and the transaction for that would be MDBT. Execute the transaction. And here it will uh, already show you the existing variants uh, that we have for the MRP for all these plans. So now to create a new variant, just click on the create variant icon here and then we can uh, enter the uh, variant, something like uh, a new variant or maybe for plan 1000. So I'm going to create a variant called as plan 1000 and then click on this create icon here. And here we are going to use it for all selection screens and then continue. So here, uh, since I'm only uh, utilizing one plant. So I'm going to enter the plant as 1000. And after that, we have the uh, option basically to choose the processing key, whether it is NETCH or NETPL or NEUPL. So that depends on the business requirement, right? And then we have the create purchase requisition option where you can actually assign whether to create a purchase requisition or a planned order, or should it be a purchase requisition in the opening period? So for now, I'll just leave it as the purchase requisitions. And similarly, you also can choose the uh, other parameters for the schedule line or the MRP list and so on. So once you have finalized on these MRP control parameters, so the next step is to click on the attributes. So it, it is going to prompt you a warning message that the MRP areas uh, should be used for the scope of planning. So that's fine. And then we are into the variant attributes so enter the description and then click on save so now the variant plan 1000 has been uh, created in the second step where you have you have to create a scope of planning so let me show you that as well in uh, om0e transaction 
So in this configuration, we are going to basically create a scope of planning. Let's say, for example, I create a scope of planning like uh, SP uh, and it would be for three plants. So I'll keep it as SP3. So this would be multiple plants and select the planning scope and just double click on the sequence of plants and in the new entries here you can basically enter the multiple plan codes that you would like to add it uh, to the scope of planning right and if you have any specific MRP area that also can be assigned over here so let me go back uh, to the MDBT so in the MDBT we can see that the variant has been uh, already available here and now to create the background job I need to go to SM36 transaction and here I'm going to create uh, the background job for uh, the plant 1000 so MRP background job for plant 1000 that would be the name of my uh, job here and then we have to assign the variant right so for that you have to click on the step icon and here we have to assign the program uh, for the MRP. So that would be RM MRP 000. So this is the program name for the uh, MRP. And now here we are, we are going to choose the variant what we have created here uh, in, in our previous step. So I'm going to choose the variant as plan 1000 and then save it. So once it has been saved, it is going to show us an overview of the details that we have created here. And then we have to define the frequency or the condition of, of this background job. So once you click on the start condition icon, there will be a pop-up screen appearing here where you can actually define the schedule of this particular background job. If you'd like to run the background job now itself, so then click on immediate and then you can just save it. So this job is going to execute in the, in the background at the I mean, as soon as you save this transaction here, but if you like to make it as a periodic job, say for example, uh, once in a day, so you have to check this uh, indicator here for the periodic job and then click on period values. So in the period values, it is going to ask you uh, 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 should it be on an hourly basis or a daily basis, weekly, monthly and so on. So let's say you would like to schedule it on a daily basis, right? So then you click on daily basis and then save it. And the next thing is that the date and time, right? So when should the job actually uh, start? On what day and on what time? So these parameters can also be entered over here. And in the immediate uh, option here, we do have this option uh, where you can enter some re uh, restrictions. Like if you feel that the background job is not needed to be executed on the public holidays or the uh, weekends, so let's say on Sundays, so then you can choose this radio button, right? So in case uh, there is a holiday or a non-working day, so then we are going to move the schedule to the previous working day or it, it can be moved on to the next working day. So in order to choose these options, you have to enter the factory calendar of that particular plant. So based on that system is going to be uh, aware of what are the working days and the public holidays on that particular factory calendar, right? And then you have to click on transfer. So for now, I'm, I'm going to ignore this. Okay. And now the date and time. So let's say I'm going to start it on 26th of April. And the time, it would be this one. Okay, this is fine for me. And it should not start after uh, a specific date. So I'm going to leave it here. And let's say if you have a dependency where you would like to execute this MRP uh, only when the completion of, of a previous job has been done. So then you can actually enter the job name that is a prerequisite uh, to trigger this MRP uh, job. So then uh, that particular job can be entered over here or provided in this field and then click on this icon. So which means that once the status of this particular job is off or completed, then only this particular MRP background job will start uh, into action, right? So this is one option. And another uh, option is to uh, where we can see this uh, after event. So if you have created any events in the system, let's say, for example, 
uh, you have uh, an event created for uh, a materials creation. So whenever there is a new material creation, there can be an event triggered here. So that e event can be uh, provided in this field, right? So whenever this event has been triggered or completed, the background job can also be executed. And next we have the operation mode. So this is basically used for a, a, a nightly shift or a, a day shift. So I never worked on this uh, particular option. So I'm not having much uh, idea on this, uh, to be honest. And that's it. So I'm going to go back here and immediate. And I have my uh, period values or as daily, right? And then I'm going to save it. And once we create this uh, frequency, and please do not forget to uh, save this particular transaction here. So once it is saved, only then the job will be set as the status as released. So now the job has been activated. So to check this status, let me log into the SM37 transaction. And here I'm going to enter my user ID or even you can just uh, remove the user ID here and just enter the program name of the MRP. It is RMMRP000 and the job selection values over here and then click on execute. So here we can see that this is the background job what we created and the status is showing as finished, right? So this is the start date and this is the start time and this is the total duration. So since previously uh, another background job has been executed on the same uh, day. So it, it took around 14 seconds. So after this uh, run, there are uh, no materials that have actually been pushed into this uh, MRP job. So that's the reason we see the duration here as zero seconds. Right? And before we execute this background job, we have to make sure that we do have the planning file entries available uh, in the plant. So let's say in my plant 1000 and I've choose the planning mode as uh, the net change planning. And uh, in once I execute this transaction, I need to make sure that I have uh, the complete list of materials activated with the planning file entry, right? So we need to make sure that the net change in planning file entry has been activated here. So only then, these materials will be part of the MRP run. So there might be some instances where you actually execute an MRP, but uh, there are no proposals created uh, for that particular material in the plant. So the first thing you have to do is to check the planning file entries in MD21 here. So in the MD21, if you see that there is a planning file entry for the material uh, and it did not, uh, I mean, was not sent into the MRP uh, run, so then we have to uh, look at other parameters, uh, whether there is any inconsistency between the planning file entry and the MRP run, or is there any uh, plan parameters, uh, a discrepancy uh, in the material master. So if there is uh, no planning file entry here uh, for that particular material in MD21, so then we cannot expect that to be part of the MRP run, right? So we have to make sure that the material has a, a valid planning file, uh, a valid MRP type, and also has an entry in the planning file entry, right? So in, in order to create a, a planning file entry, uh, we do have the manual transaction, it is MD20. So we, we are going to create a planning file entry for a material, right? So we are basically forcing the planning file entry to be created for that material. But automatically, based on the MRP types, I mean, if the material is eligible for the MRP, automatically system is going to push that material into the planning file entry. But if something is missing for that reason, we can push this material in, into the planning file entry. And then we, we can try to execute uh, MRP only for that material in the MD02 so that we'll be aware if there is any kind of discrepancy from the master data side. So that's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also click on the bell icon to receive updates. We'll meet again soon in our next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.